Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching. I'm going to show you how to curve a score um, or curve a set of scores. I am using this for the idea of curving your final exam scores, your test scores. So let's uh, try something. I'm going to put the raw score over here. I always like to use a, a spreadsheet to do this or I'm going to use a TI-83 and I'll try that in a minute too. Um, and we will use a, an Excel spreadsheet to do this. We're going to put the raw score. So I like to indent, come in a little bit in case I want to have an extra row. Never know. I'm going to use the headers raw and curve. And we are going to put in two scores. My lowest score. We're going to use my friend's score here, my friend's set of test scores that I just helped him with. And it gave me this idea to do. He had a low score of 46 on a test, and he didn't want to give that low of a score. He wanted to give a 55. So I've put a raw score of 46 next to a 55 score. He had, did have a good high score, high of 96. We're going to go ahead and give that person a 99. This is what I call, um, I guess, a Jeffersonian style curve, where you give a little more to the bottom, and a little less to the top. So if we curve this way, basically I'm adding nine points to the bottom and three points to the top. So everybody gets something. Um, and uh, in the Jeffersonian style, the, the people who need it the most get the most. Um, this is opposed to a straight curve where you basically increase all of them by shifting the crap, the, excuse me, shifting the scores up uh, by 10 or five or two or whatever it is. A lot of people say we'll add four points to make this one the high score. Um, of 100, and then they'll do that for everybody else's. Um, I believe that it doesn't uh, give a nice normal distribution for the entire uh, year, so I prefer doing it this way. And if you can hear my baby screaming in the background, I apologize. Um, let's see, we're um, going to take these two scores onto the curving. It just takes a second from here. We are going to um, add a trend line. So I'm going to go up here to insert. We want to highlight the four scores. Actually, I want to highlight the headers too. It works really nice. So click and drag from your left click button. Click the center of the raw to down to the 99. That's from B2 to C4. Click on the insert tab. I'm using one of the latest Excel versions. So they've moved things around, but it's in a nice area now. Scatter over here in the center. Scatter. I'm going to do the straight scatter plot. Since using the last version of Excel, they've uh, now made it a default to take the X coordinates or the horizontal coordinates and use uh, the first row as your horizontal coordinates. And right now it's not doing exactly what I was hoping to do because it thinks that the horizontal coordinates are these two words, raw and curved. Normally in mathematics, we have the horizontal coordinates up and down the, the B column here or the left column. This would be the X coordinates versus the Y coordinates, our output being the Y. So to undo the default, they, they figured that this would be a problem, I guess, at Microsoft. And so they put a switch row column button right here to make that a convenient switch. If you click on it, you get exactly what you want. At the X coordinate or the input of 46, the output is 55, which is exactly where we want it. And the uh, 96, it's a score of almost 100 at 99. You can see this stuff. Right click on any one of these two dots, add trend line, add trend line. Uh, down at the bottom of this chart, you're going to see the only one you want to check. It defaults to a linear. We're going to use a linear chart here, a linear graph, a regression line. We're going to do display equation. That's the only button you want to check. Hit close. And you want to click and drag and move your equation so you can see it better. So this equation says to curve these scores, we're going to multiply by 0.88 and add 14.52 to every one of your input scores. And this will give everybody an equal, and this is important, an equal and fair share with a little bit more going to the bottom and a little bit less going to the top where they don't need it to have their A in, in a sense. So I'm going to give you a way to have a, a nice little chart to use. So let's put a bottom score of 46. I'm going to move down a little bit. And this is still my raw column and curve uh, column. So I'm going to do equals. This is going to put a formula in. 0.88. And I'm going to do times. That's shift 8. I'm going to multiply times the cell next to it. You can type in shift B7. I'm going to click. And it types in the B7 because it's the cell I clicked on. 
I'm going to put a plus sign, just like the formula says, so plus 14.52. Hit return. And you can see that my 55 score is curved, uh, excuse me, if a 46 score is curved to 55. I'm going to put a 47 down, and then I could sit here and put 48 and 49, but Microsoft and basically all spreadsheets are very smart with this. So that's something to realize that spreadsheets are a very important piece of why we have personal computers. A black box down here. I'm going to take and click it, drag it down. I'm going to drag it down just off the chart. I'm still holding the button down. You can see the number is going up to now 100, and I just stopped it at a time. The column down over here, excuse me, the row header over here says 61, but it's 100 more from 46. It recognized that I had 46 and 47, so it figured I wanted to anticipate a copy and paste, but adding one along the way. That's called a series. This one, I literally want to copy and paste it. But instead of going copy, paste, 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 we used to do that in the old days, we now click and drag this black box until I get down all the way down and I lift it back up, move the mouse back up to get stop scrolling automatically and let go. And now you can see I have a nice table of curved scores. I prefer things to be a little bit more formatted nicely, so I'm going to use the centering command after highlighting the two columns. Centering command. And I'm also going to take and highlight the C column here, which has my curved scores. I'm going to come up here to the number. I'm under home still, so I'm in the home tab. I'm going to change those to be number. With a slightly less decimal, we don't need all those decimals. In fact, I don't need any of them for my input usually, so I'm going to decrease it by one or both to get integers instead of real numbers or rational numbers. Excuse me. Now you've got your nice little chart. Um, to show you the same idea with the TI-83, I'm going to pull up my TI-83. We're going to now use my, I have a virtual TI-83 here. I'm going to come back to the Excel charts. You can see both simultaneously. Hopefully this is coming across as I'm recording it. I'm going to turn on my uh, TI-83. I'm going to clear out the screen. This is, I guess, more for the math and science department. If you use the stat button, you might like using the uh, edit, and we're going to use L1 and L2. I have values in here. I'm going to use a quick clearing command, which means I'm going to go up to the header, hit clear, and down arrow, or enter would work. And I'm going to clear out some of the numbers I've been using with my math class. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put in a raw score of 46. I'm going to click in on the 46, and a raw score of 96. Hit enter on each one. Move over to the other column. Curved 55 and 99. Let's now take this and make a stat, cal uh, calculate a linear regression. I'm going to take the linear regression. I'm also going to put it in the Y1 column automatically. To do this, you use VARS, right arrow on Y VARS, and just hit Enter for function and Enter for Y1, and now Enter again to actually create the equation. You'll notice the equation does match 0.88 for our slope and 14.52 for our y-intercept. Let's go ahead and take a look at our y equals. Sometimes I like to see the graph of both the equation of the curved and the raw, and this is where you can get a nice visual of why I do what I do with this kind of curve. Normally, we take 100 divided, uh, their score was actually 100 um, times, uh, excuse me, their score, the, the most uh, that this test that I'm using is a friend of mine's test, pardon me, had a little bit of a mind blank there was an actual 100 score. So this is actually a slope of, for every raw score, you get an x value. So 1 times x or x. In the window, I'll change it to start at, uh, to go up to a max of 100. So you can see all the way out to the raw score. And the y to go out to 100. And I'll hit graph. You can see both of our scores. From here, I can either use the table. I can either use the table or I can actually just sit here and use the trace button and get raw scores. For instance, over here it says a 50 produced a 59. Let's see how it works on here. I'll hit a trace button. Okay, if I hit the trace button and I type in, it's like a, being at second calc value. Anybody knows that one? And you put a 50 in. You'll see that I get a 58.52, which rounds to a 59, which shows right here on our spreadsheet and verifies it. Let's test it again. 
60 only gets seven points and you can see the the graduated kind of curve a little more for the people that need it a little less for the people that don't person that gets a 60 let's put in a 60 and you will see then their uh, raw score uh, excuse me their curve score is a 67.5 at 60 well excuse me i lost it i just clicked on something there so 60 is 67.32 which rounds to 67. So I hope you uh, enjoy the way I make my curves. Um, the one thing that's nice about doing it on the spreadsheet is if you save it and just change these numbers and recreate your new table, you can reuse this at any time. Thank you much for your attention. I'm David from Electric Teaching, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. this.